Let's solve the uh, second of two heat exchanger problems. Uh, this one we're going to be asked to find the uh, heat transfer that exists between the two fluids. As shown in the drawing below, refrigerant 134A enters a condenser operating at steady state at 70 psi, 160 degrees Fahrenheit, and is condensed to saturated liquid at 60 psi on the outside of tubes through which cooling water flows. In passing through the tubes, the cooling water increases in temperature by 20 degrees Fahrenheit and experiences no significant pressure drop. Cooling water may be bottled as incompressible with a specific volume of 0.0161 cubic feet per pound mass and a specific heat of 1 BTU per pound mass R. The mass flow rate of the refrigerant is 3,100 pounds mass per hour. Neglecting kinetic and potential energy effects and ignoring heat transfer from the outside of the condenser, determine A, the volumetric flow rate of entering cooling water in gallons per minute, and B, the rate of heat transfer in BTUs per hour to the cooling water from the condensing refrigerant. So let's look at this uh, heat exchanger. This would actually be considered a cross-flow heat exchanger. So you have the refrigerant uh, coming in as a superheated vapor, and it crosses the uh, co uh, cooling water tubes. And then the refrigerant uh, leaves as a saturated liquid. And as the water passes through this condensing um, refrigerant, it's going to get warmer by 20 degrees. Let's look at how we're going to model this. Let's, let's draw a schematic of the system. Essentially, we have refrigerant flowing through one side of the heat exchanger and water flowing through the other side. So the states have been labeled uh, incoming refrigerant is state one, exiting refrigerant is state two, incoming water is state A, and exiting water is state B. Now, the refrigerant is hotter than the water, so heat is going to transfer energy from the refrigerant to the water. So the refrigerant is cooling off and the water is heating up. But we're taking this system, at least for step one here, we're going to take the system as the entire heat exchanger involving both fluids. So the heat transfer between the refrigerant and the water does not come into our energy balance for this system. And in fact, we were told that uh, for all intents and purposes, the exterior of our heat exchanger is insulated, so there's no heat transfer between the heat exchanger, which is our system, and the surroundings. So Q dot is zero in this expression. Well, let's look at what we're, we're given. Um, let's start with the incoming refrigerant. We know its uh, pressure and its temperature, its mass flow rate, and we also know that it's superheated vapor. So it's fully defined. The exiting refrigerant is at 60 PSI and it's a saturated liquid. So it's also fully defined. How about the water? Incoming water, uh, we're told is an incompressible liquid that we can uh, take its specific volume to be 0.0161 cubic feet per pound mass, that it has a constant specific heat, which is one BTU per pound mass R, and it's subcooled water. The exiting water at state B, uh, there's no pressure change uh, across the heat exchanger. The temperature change is 20 degrees R, or actually the way I've done it here, it's R degrees. When you subtract two temperatures, which we generally show as you know, degrees R, or in this case, uh, degrees F, you don't get a temperature. So you're not gonna get degrees F or degrees R, you're gonna get a number of degrees. And I always write that as you know, R degrees, which is the same as F degrees. So uh, this remains subcooled water. Let's look at the assumptions we're going to make to um, solve this problem. We're gonna model the entire heat exchanger as we just uh, saw. We're gonna consider it an open system operating at steady state, and that there's no change in kinetic energy or potential energy. Also, there's no heat transfer to the surroundings. 
Of course, a heat exchanger, there's no mechanism for doing work, so W dot's zero. And we're going to model water as an incompressible liquid. We want to find the volumetric flow rate at the entrance uh, in gallons per minute. And we also want to find the heat transfer that occurs between the water and the refrigerant. Let's draw a property diagram of the water. So uh, this TV diagram has one pressure line on it. Uh, we don't know what the pressure is, but the pressure for A is the same as the pressure for B. The, there's no pressure change going through the heat exchanger. So that is this constant pressure line. And we start out at state A at some unknown temperature. And we stay at a constant pressure until we get to state B. And what we know is that the temperature difference, uh, TB minus TA, is 20 R degrees. Let's look at the refrigerant. Uh, it comes in at 70 PSI and 160 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a superheated vapor. So I'm going to plot uh, state one here. We know that state two is at a lower pressure, 60 PSI, and it's a saturated liquid. So it's at 60 PSI, and it's going to be on the saturated liquid line. So state two is here. Now, I've drawn a dashed line from one to two. All I know is that the, it starts out at state one, and it ends up at state two. I don't know the exact path that it takes. So I just draw a dotted line and say, yes, it gets from one to two. Let's begin by simplifying our mass flow rates. We know that the, the mass flow rate coming in at state one is equal to the mass flow rate leaving at state two. And this is the refrigerant. So we're just going to call it M dot R. We also know that the mass flow rate of water coming in at A is equal to the mass flow rate of water exiting at B. We're just going to call that the mass flow rate of water. Let's write an energy balance. And again, this is for the entire heat exchanger. So it's going to include both the flow rate of uh, refrigerant and the mass flow rate of water. So for an open steady state system, we know that dE dt is 0. And that is equal to Q dot minus W dot um, plus the refrigerant mass flow rate times its change in enthalpy plus the mass flow rate of the water times its change in enthalpy. Well, we were given that there was no heat transfer uh, to the surroundings. And uh, also, there's no work done. So let's rearrange this equation and solve for the mass flow rate ratio, which would be the mass flow rate of water divided by the mass flow rate of refrigerant. Well, that's just going to be H1 minus H2 divided by HB minus HA. So let's find this uh, term HB minus HA. That's uh, the enthalpy change for the water. Now, since the water is a subcooled liquid at both states, we have an equation for that. We know the quantity HB minus HA is C delta T plus V delta P. But there was no pressure change uh, for the water across the heat exchanger. So we'll eliminate this term. And we're left with HB minus HA. It's just the specific heat times the quantity Tb minus Ta. Well, we were given the specific heat. It's 1 BTU per pound mass R. And we know Tb minus Ta. We don't know either one of them independently, but we know that the, the Tb minus Ta is 20 R degrees. So we calculate that the quantity Hb minus Ha is 20 BTUs per pound mass. Now let's find the enthalpy for the entering and exiting um, refrigerant. I'm going to start in the uh, refrigerant saturation table at 70 PSI, which is the uh, in inlet pressure. And I find that the saturation temperature at 70 PSI is 58.35 degrees Fahrenheit. Now our temperature is uh, greater than this saturation temperature, so therefore it's a superheated vapor. Now, we had already stated this in setting up the problem. I'm just confirming it here that, yes, uh, state one is a superheated vapor. And I'm going to find its enthalpy in the superheat table at conditions of 160 degrees Fahrenheit and 70 PSI. 
And from the table, I get that value as H1 equals 133.82 BTUs per pound mass. Now, uh, the state two for the refrigerant is a saturated liquid at 60 PSI. And I'm going to find that in the saturation table where H2 is equal to H sub F. That's the enthalpy of the saturated liquid. And that table value is 27.24 BTUs per pound mass. Now I can calculate for the mass flow rate of water. It's um, from this, uh, I'm going to rearrange this energy balance that we came up with over here. And I'm going to get the mass flow rate of the water is the mass flow rate of the refrigerant times H1 minus H2 over HB minus HA. Well, I know the mass flow rate of the refrigerant that was given in the problem statement. We found the enthalpy at state one in the table. We also found the enthalpy for state two in the table. And we know this term HB minus HA was equal to 20 BTUs per pound mass. So we calculate a mass flow rate for the water of 16,520 pounds mass per hour. But we were asked for the volumetric flow rate at the inlet. Well, that's just simply the mass flow rate times the specific volume at the inlet, which was given. So the volumetric flow rate of incoming water is the mass flow rate of the water times the specific volume at the inlet and then I have to convert cubic feet to gallons and uh, an hour to 60 minutes. And I get the uh, volumetric flow rate of water at the inlet is 33.16 gallons per minute. Now we want to calculate the heat transfer that flows from the um, uh, refrigerant into the water. And so now to do that, we're going to have to start over and create a new system. And this system, we're going to draw just around the water side of the heat exchanger. So our new system will be water between the inlet of the heat exchanger A and the exit of the heat exchanger at B. And we'll write then an energy balance uh, for this system. And that will include this uh, Q dot term. But remember that W dot is zero, delta KE is zero, delta PE is zero. And when I eliminate all those terms from my energy balance, my energy balance just reduces to the heat transfer rate is the mass flow rate of water times HB minus HA. Well, we know the mass flow rate of water. We calculated it uh, with the original system. And we also calculated with the specific heat of water the term HB minus HA, which was 20 BTUs per pound mass. And we get the heat transfer is 3.3 times 10 to the fifth BTUs per hour. And notice that that's positive, which uh, corresponds with our definition of uh, direction for heat transfer is positive if heat transfers energy into the system. Now, we could have gotten the same number, but with an opposite sign. If we had written a um, energy balance for a system that defines the refrigerant side of the heat exchanger. So we could have defined this problem where the uh, system is just the refrigerant side of the heat exchanger between its inlet and outlet. In which case, heat is transferring energy from the refrigerant to the water. So we would expect to see a negative uh, heat transfer term on this particular situation. So we can write the same energy balance. Again, uh, uh, W dot, delta Ke, and delta P are all zero. And so the energy balance uh, simplifies to Q dot for this system here involving the refrigerant. It's just the mass flow rate of the refrigerant times H1 minus H2. We have all of these values. Uh, and we get that Q dot is minus 3.3 times 10 to the fifth BTUs per hour. So you can see that we get exactly the same numerical value for heat transfer, but we get the opposite sign. So if we define the water as our system, heat transfer is positive. And if we define refrigerant as our system, heat transfer will be negative. But in either case, uh, the numerical value of Q dot is the same.